Hello. So um, starting early December, like, I have been wanting to do a project entirely in Rust. Um, I like math. I like science. Um, I like data science too. But um, for the moment, I'm mostly learning Rust. So um, I want to do a more relatively more basic project um, entirely in Rust. And um, because of my background, I, I I'm actually very interested in how we implement um, the mathematical algorithms for some structures as simple as polynomials. Um, obviously, when we talk about polynomials, it's not some data structure that that's given by the programming language. We have to define it somehow. So the project is about defining polynomials in Rust and how do I make it more general? Um, how do I implement all the um, arithmetic for the polynomials in an efficient way? And lastly, how do I um, use the fast Fourier transform to compute um, the product of two polynomials efficiently. So let me make a point here, right? Uh, you might think, okay, you're multiplying two polynomials together. That's not big of a, not too big of a deal. Um, what happened is that the mathematical operation, which is called convolution, is actually in essence, in essence, is actually the same as multiplying two polynomials. So you might think, okay, it's no value, right? What's the point? You are just multiplying two polynomials. But it turns out that um, when you are convolving one sequence of numbers with another sequence of numbers, you are essentially doing polynomial multiplication. So it's actually um, it's actually worth it to find the most efficient way to do that and because convolution is everywhere in um, in, in science right in physics in even in data science too um, so there are some natural questions to be answered right um, first is how can we beat our naive um, intuition right F right the the naive way of multiplying two polynomials is, of course, you just go turn by turn and then you realize, OK, right, the naive way, um, you realize you're going to multiply A0 by B0 all the way to Bn, and then you're going to multiply A1 by B0 all the way to Bn again, and then you repeat this process. Obviously, it's going to be um, O n square. Right, so how do we actually make this faster? And this is where um, the fast Fourier transform algorithm shines. Um, to understand this, um, of course, this is not uh, really um, a tutorial on this because, uh, again, I, I don't think I'm very good at making tutorials. But the way you should think of the fast Fourier transform algorithm is that it transforms polynomials from coefficient representation to point value representation. So every polynomial can be represented by a few points. Let, let's say if I want to know, if I have two points on the plane, then I uniquely, I can uniquely define a linear polynomial, right? We all learned that in grade school. And the same thing is true if I know three points for a quadratic polynomial. And this fact can be proven um, by some matrix, matrix argument, argument. And I will, of course, leave a link to a very detailed um, video on all of this. So what the fast Fourier transform, so the fast Fourier transform allow, uh, algorithm allows us to map our coefficient representation to uh, the value representation in n log n time, oh, big O of n log n time. All right, and then once we have 
um, the value representation of two polynomials, now it's actually easy to multiply the values together, right? Because the product of a and b, right, the product of a and b here, if we evaluate a and b at the same points, then then for the product, when we evaluate at, the, again, the same point is just the value of a times the value of b. So here, we when we multiply point-wise, it's only actually o n, right? So we can get the value representation of the product quite easily. And then the last step is to map the value representation back to the coefficient representation. And so instead of um, going straight here using the naive method, we will take a detour. We map it first to the value representation. Then we do some pointwise multiplication. And then we map it back using back to the coefficient representation using the inverse Fourier transform algorithm. So that's the basic ideas of fast Fourier transform. OK, so of course, right, to do to do any of this, right, we have to first um, define um, a polynomial class. And it, it, this, this is, turns out to be, in my opinion, a very good learning experience for Rust, um, partly because I don't just want to define polynomials for real numbers, floats. I want to define polynomials for um, anything that kind of makes numerical sense, right? Uh, if I can add, divide, multiply, subtract, and they, those things, everything, those are also numbers. And then I, I want to define polynomials over other structures too. So, um, so I had to learn about um, Rust traits, right? I'm, I'm actually forced to use traits now. Um, and what else? And then there are, when we are, obviously I want to print uh, polynomial nicely, so then I have to use some other traits, and then I have to deal with some quite lower level stuff, in my opinion, like these operations in OPS in order to to be able to use the plus symbols for two polynomials. It, and it's quite fun. The, the whole, the entire process, it took me, I don't know, probably 10 days on and off. Obviously, I, I wasn't doing this full time, <laughs> um, but I've been, I've been just spending a little bit of time every day thinking about how, thinking about this problem. And it turns out um, the code is pretty long. The, the entire polynomial struct is pretty long. <laughs> And um, right, let me let me show a few examples first. Obviously, this whole thing should work, right? So let me just um, cargo run main. So here we are doing some um, basic arithmetics, right? So we are dividing a polynomial by another, and obviously the answer is correct. And here we are multiplying two polynomials, and this is um, again a correct answer. You can check by yourself. And we are dividing uh, polynomials again, and this time we don't have a remainder, so the remainder is zero, and this is correct. And then uh, uh, just for the just 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 for fun, I also implemented the de derivative for polynomials. This turns out to be um, a little bit tricky if you think about it, right? Um, because I'm I'm defining polynomials over and uh, because I'm I'm defining polynomials over any trait, right? Any trait that satisfies some numerical properties. Um, you can't really say, okay, I'm going to multiply five, which is um. A u size or use or u I mean which is a u size to the a value of t. Well t is something that satisfies the numerical um trait. So actually um the derivative operation is slightly trickier than what is seems at first. But it's it's quite fun and um I will post a link to this project on GitHub. Um
long division again is kind it, it, it really brings back some um it brings back some memory um it's fun writing all these P probably my children in the future they they can just use this program to do long division <laughs> that would be fun um yeah and in the end um i implemented the fast fourier transform algorithm um sorry i'm just doing random stuff right now where is the fast FFT okay yeah so here we do have the fast Fourier transform algorithms and um, the core of the algorithm is basically this function I have to say a lot of thanks to um, to this channel reducible um, yeah, he gives a very good explanation of the entire algorithm, the intuitions, and how do we actually do that. And then, um, the natural question is, well, is there any way to make um, the fast forward transform even faster, right? So I thought about it for a moment. I, I can't really see any obvious um, optimizations. Well, first, I, I think it should be clear that our polynomials should be um, array instead of vec. Well, why? Because um, if it's vec, um, well, first of all, if, our polynomial is final, right? Um, if A is defined to be a polynomial, we don't want A to change. It's just the polynomial, right? So, so we kind of have a uh, fixed space, right? And and if you remember here, we are actually multiplying. Um, we're multiplying the values here together. So if we use vec to represent our polynomial, then this multiplication will, well, it's just going to be the typical loop, right? It's it's going to be O n, but it's a loop, um, which is not vectorized computation. Which this 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 might seem a li the, the wording here is quite unfortunate. So I am computing the product one after another, right? This operation is not entirely vectorized because I'm doing things one by one. Um, but if I use, say, ND array as my data structure for polynomials, then, well, all I need to do is to say array one multiplied by array two. And this operation, because this happens in ND array, this operation, I believe, is Vectorize, so it's so it, I think what happens is that it sends less mach, mm, instructions to the, to your machine, right? So this can potentially be faster. So this is the first point to optimize, right? And then what are some other points you can optimize? Well, um, I'm not very good at this stuff, S but there is actually one place that I think uh, we can. Multi-thread, we can actually, um, so if you remember, here we are mapping the two polynomials to their value representation, right? So we can, instead of mapping A first and then we map B, we can actually map A and B to their value representation at the same time. So we can parallelize that. So it, that will make things faster, um, which is not too hard to do. Um, so in Rust, um, what you can do is you can create um, a scope thread. So essentially, you create um, a scope here and then the scope can spawn new threads. Um, this might require, um, I believe, 
at least 1.6 Rust. I, I'm not exactly sure, but Scopes Rust was just recently introduced, like half a year ago. So you need um, more. You need probably the the, the newer versions of Rust. Um, so we can do. Uh, we can map the polynomials into their value representation in parallel. So that's good. And then we do the pointwise multiplication, and then we do the inverse fast forward transform. So let's actually look at some results. So I, I actually plotted the, the time. So the y-axis here is um, in milliseconds. So, and the x-axis here represents degree. Um, let me, yeah, now it should be bigger. And maybe, yeah, now it's bigger. So as you can see, um, the naive method follows kind of a the curve looks kind of quadratic, and the fast Fourier transform method is the gross looks logarithmic. Um, you might wonder what why why we have these kind of step function look to the graph. Well, the reason is um, here. The fast Fourier transform algorithm kind of has to work on polynomials of degree. Sorry, the, the length of the polynomial should be 2 to the n before we can actually apply the algorithm to the polynomial. So we have to, you know, we have to pad the polynomial with leading zeros. So that that that's that explains why if you look here, right, the jump happens when we hit 2048, which is a power of 2, right? Because after that, we need to allocate 4098 um, slots for our array. And that's why we get this step function. But the growth is logarithmic, uh, sorry, I mean, in log n, so it does make sense. And as I said, the part of it can be parallelized and indeed we get some performance gain by using two threads right by using two threads to map these things to their value representations at the same time so the blue line here is the two thread version of FFT multiplication and that's about the end of my wit so I, I actually don't know if I can make things faster but um, I decided to make this project public everyone who wants to do this project can take a look at it and uh, let me know if you have ideas on optimizing the code um, if you if you think some implementation might be inefficient or I, I've tested a lot of things so I believe the implementation should be correct but if you think something is inefficient let me know and if you have questions feel free to leave your question in the comments so this is just me learning rust and um, I'm just doing a retro for my own project right now I hope I don't I hope you can do your own rust project and do retros like this and then we can all learn from each other all right thank you and see you in the next one